Hi, and welcome to another edition of the Aussie Ideas Man. I think it's been about a fortnight since I've recorded anything. This time I'm going to do the cretin as he looks at the 2024, I think it is, SEC filings. In any case, I'm going to also compare it with his 23 SEC filings, where in that one he compares that with the 2022 SEC filings. And we'll see what sort of nonsense we can come up with. Hello everyone, it's Steve with Aptera Owners Club. Aptera released another um, SEC filing a few days ago, so I thought we'd go over it. Not not too many changes, but there's one big change that uh, I'm, I'm sure most of you guys have heard about, and we are going to get into that in another video. But let's kind of briefly go over the major changes um, in this uh, offering. All right, so pretty boilerplate stuff here. And then this is the new. This is what's different. Is there's a new share price of fourteen eighty. I believe that this may have been um, in a previous um, offering, but it never got implemented. The previous price was ten dollars and fifty cents. So you know it used to be like three eighty. Then it went up to ten and fifty, and now it's at fourteen eighty. Um, First cab off the rank, the increased share price. I think I'll talk about this because it'll take me forever to text it. I think the reason why they've increased the share price is because they get more whenever there's an asset sale. And I've used the calculator to display this. What I did was I multiplied the old share price by the 55,000 plus shares that they hold to get a total value. And then I multiplied those shares by the new price to get a new total value. And as you can see by the calculator, that that new total value is nearly $240 million more. So that's what raising the price does. Now, when there's an absolute asset sale, they get the first distribution of money received by sold assets. And by having a $240 million higher value in that, it just means that they will get everything. It means that any other, these Class B common stock people, don't have a hope of getting any crumbs left from any asset sales if they fold. Of course, on the wild chance that they actually become a viable company that sells something, it also means that their shares are worth far more. So they win either way. As you will see later on, this number is somewhat arbitrarily determined. does not mean that your shares have gone up in price although maybe theoretically it has. Um, any of us that own shares right now, there's no way to liquidate them. There's no way to sell them. There's no market for them at this time. So their, 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 their price is kind of arbitrary. And just because this price went up to 1480 doesn't mean that your shares have gone up to 1480. Okay. Um, so this is this is all the standard stuff they talk about. And then I wanted to go over these risks related to our business and industry. This goes on. So this is the bullet points and they go into it in detail here. Our auditors issued a going concern opinion. Going concern sounds bad, but that's actually good. These matters raise doubt about the company's ability to continue as a going concern. So currently they are a going concern. A company plans to raise significantly more capital and future fundraising, offering equity at significant discount. Uh, including offering equity at a significant discount to the price offered in this offering. So that means they're saying, we don't have revenue, we're going to raise more money, it's, you are going to get diluted, and the people that buy in the future, they might be getting their shares at a lower price than you paid for it. Um, at, you know, it's gonna, it might be lower than $1480, might be lower than $1050, might be lower than $380. They're, they're saying that that's, this is highly likely to happen that they're 100% going to raise more capital, you are going to get diluted, but um, and there's a possibility that the people in the future will pay less than you. All right. We anticipate that we will initially depend on revenue generated from a single model. We are dependent on suppliers, the majority of which are single source suppliers, and inability of these suppliers to deliver necessary components. Um, according to our schedule and our prices and quality levels and volumes, um, or our inability to efficiently manage these components, so yeah, so they're they're just saying like it's a big logistical thing and if they can't handle logistics or their suppliers drop out and they don't have enough contingency plans, it's going to be hard. So it's a very complex operation that they're running here. Um, we have limited experience in high volume manufacture of our vehicles. Yeah, so they've, they've never done this before. 
if our vehicle fails to perform as expected, our ability to develop, market, and sell or lease our products could be harmed. I mean, obviously, if they're if this vehicle fails to perform as expected, they're they're not going to do well, and that's what they're saying. Um, cap, company operates in a capital intensive environment. Um, terms of any loans may not be favorable to the company. Uh, Aptra operates in a highly competitive market. That's obvious. We we uh, face significant technological and legal barriers to entry. Okay. Um, our success depends on customers' willingness to adopt energy-efficient solar-powered vehicles, obviously. Uh, developments and improvements in alternative technologies, um, you know, such as full electric hybrid internal combustion or continued low retail gasoline prices may materially and adversely affect the demand for energy-efficient solar-powered vehicles. Yes. So, you know, if someone happens to develop an internal combustion engine that gets 500 miles per gallon, probably the demand for this is going to go down. Uh, this, these are just kind of obvious things. We face several regulatory hurdles. Motor vehicles like those produced by the family are highly regulated, subject to regulatory changes. Yes. Demand in the um, vehicle industry is highly volatile, as we know, um, especially in the EV sector. You know that uh, demand has fluctuated significantly in the past couple of years. Uh, we may be affected by uncertainty over government purchase incentives. As we know, currently, Aptera does not qualify for any government incentive, at least at, at the federal level. Um, and that might change. So um, if, if if they get an incentive, that's going to help Aptera a lot. If they don't get, if they continue to not get the incentive, that's going to hurt them a little bit. Um, there's project product liability claims. That's true for any company. Um, limited intellectual property protection may may cause us to lose our competitive advantage. So, and there is current, okay, so this is the one that, uh, the, that uh, everyone's going to want to know about. We are subject to a patent infringement suit filed in July 2021. See the company's business, legal, and regulatory environment. So we're going to, we're going to see that later on in this report. And again, we're going to cover this in a future video this week. Um, our failure to obtain... Uh, or maintain the right to use uh, intellectual property may negatively affect our business. And that's partially what this uh, pending litigation is about or could be about. Uh, company insurance may not be sufficient. C company anticipates it will be required to become a reporting company in the first half of 2025. This may indicate that they are planning to become a publicly traded company in the first half of 2025. I think they're hoping that they are going to be producing some vehicles at that time, and then they can go to they can go public, raise the additional capital they need to get into like larger mass scale production. Um, and then they're saying our financial controls are set for a regulatory regulation A company where they have to do minimal reporting. Once they go public, they're going to have to report. They're going to have they're going to be subject to a lot more regulatory and uh, reporting. Um, demands and they may not be set up for it. So they know about that. They're getting set up for it. Um, Aptair depends on a small management team and may need to hire more people to be successful. That means it's going to cost more and have higher cash burn. A uh, company relies on outside parties for manufacturing expertise. I mean, it's very true. They're very, very dependent on their suppliers. You know, if CPC decides to quit on them, they're just basically done. Yeah, they're, they're done. Um, as a growing company, we have to have develop reliable accounting resources, failure to, okay, so that's very, and then global economic recession is going to, might hurt us. Uh, we will require additional capital to support business growth, and this capital may, might not be available on reasonable terms or at all. So that's, that's what they're talking about here. Um, okay, so risks related to our securities, briefly. The offering price has been arbitrarily determined. This is very important to know. They've arbitrarily determined this. There's no way to know what the stock is actually worth. They have some kind of formula that they're using internally. Um, probably some accountants have done some math, but it, it, it takes a lot of um, assumptions that may or may not be true to come to these um, this uh, stock valuation. We have broad discretion over the use of the proceeds. That means they can use your money however they wish. There's no minimum set amount. That means that if you're the only, even if you're the only person investing, they will take your money. Um, so it, it it's not like there has to set a minimum threshold before they um, uh, they actually take your money. There is no current market for a security, so this is what we're talking about. You can't sell your stock. Those of us who own stock, we can't sell it to um, people. 
there's no there's no market for us to trade our stock. It's not it's not until it gets either bought out or they go public. Essentially, our our um, our stocks are worthless. Um, you will need to keep records for your in, of your investment for tax purposes. Our officers control the company. We have no independent directors. That means they don't have a board that oversees them. So our our um, our two executive officers and directors. So that's Steve uh, Fambro. Chris Anthony, they control it. There is no oversight over them. We are totally trusting those two guys to use the money well. Um, they may have potential conflicts of interest. We have broad discussion on how to use the proceeds. We do not intend to uh, pay dividends. Um, and the company has a series of preferred stock with rights that are superior. And so that means that if they do need to liquidate, you're not going to be very high in line to get any of the assets of Aptera. The, those with preferred stock are going to have um, more rights to the assets. And I believe the people that are buying the current convertible notes, they will also have higher rights to any assets if they decide to liquidate. Um, okay, so the rest of this is pretty boilerplate. Um, then they talk about all this stuff. And I, then I want to move to this uh, uh, company's business. So this is where they talk about what they've accomplished and what's currently going on, and that's what we need to know. Well, it's about time I did a little bit of comparing. We'll start with this since its inception in 2019. Now you can see I've overlaid and put to the right the 2023 review. So look what they've done. They've said they substantially complete production intent vehicle design, which they'd already completed 2023. So how did they complete it again in 2024? Established a network of suppliers for capital equipment and bill of materials. Well, they did that in 2023. So why have they reported it in 2024? Isn't this what they're supposed to have done during 2024? Next, built five drivable prototypes. Well, no, they didn't because those five were built before 2023 had ended. And they haven't built five more drivable prototypes in 2024. So that's a lie. Okay, we keep going on the dot points. Conducted validation and durability testing on production parts, yada yada. As you can see there, they'd done that in 2023. And now this report in 2024 says they're still doing it. And I guess that one's not a lie, because they are still doing it. They hadn't completed it, they just conducted. Next one, implemented a variety of internal controls. This has changed. In the 2023, they said they implemented enterprise resource planning and manufacturing execution, yada, yada, yada. But then they have dot points, so they've added something there. I don't know why they wanted to make a difference. Then they go back to created a robust intellectual property portfolio, exactly the same. Well, if it was robust in 2023, what did they need to do in 2024? Next. Amassed over 48,000 vehicle reservations. 2023, over 45,000. So there's a 3,000 gain. So they should have put for 2024, 3,000 more, not 48,000. Because that almost sounds as if it's 48,000 more. And lastly, raised over $135 million in funding. Was over $120 million. So was it $135 million in 2024 or was it 15? Like the old adage says, lies, damn lies, and statistics. These people look like they're trying to fool the SEC along with everybody else. And I don't blame them because the SEC is probably so busy with millions of reports and Aptera is so insignificant that nobody at the SEC even looks at them. So they've um, substantially completed a production intent design. Um, so they, this is... This is their advantages, you know, the fewer simple tooling, fewer robots, no welding. This is a lot to do with um, their design and the CPC um, body. And then uh, this is their product. We're very familiar with this. Um, their market, they're talking about. But so then here, here we go. We talk about the suppliers. This is a little bit more information than we had in the past. Basically, Sherry is providing them the HVAC parts. Um, and some other things. They have collaborative aims to accelerate to lead up production. They're giving them access to their supply chain um, and they've paid Sherry $1 million in cash and $5 million in stock. Uh, that was a while ago. Um, so we knew about that probably two, three years ago. 
Um, they, additionally, we have tech, technical services agreement with Sherry to assist with feasibility studies and technical services related to certain vehicle components. So a lot of these, like, I think, um, bread and butter vehicle components is going to be validated by Sherry and also um, provided by Sherry. Then the other people that they have supply relationships with Yuzaki, they're still, Yuzaki is still on board, CPC and CTNS. Um, Alafe has fallen off of this list for um, reasons that we are all aware of now. And then um, here you go. This is the, this is the biggest thing from this SEC filing, and I'm sure you guys have all heard about this. Aptera basically wrote them a letter back, um, from what I can tell, just blowing them off and saying, you guys don't own these uh, patents. This people called Idealab, they own the patents. You don't own the patents. That's kind of my take on it, and we'll figure out if that's correct when we talk to the uh, intellectual property lawyer. So, um, But we're going we're gonna to get into that. So we have uh, 29 full-time employees. That's the same. Then their intellectual property. This is their portfolio. Um, here's the, the, the patents that they've gotten. Here's the patents that are pending. And then um, uh, this is just normal stuff. Um, let me see. There was a, one more interesting part that I wanted to... Oh, yeah, here we go. This is the other important thing. And then there, they said in the, the in terms of the California Energy Commission, um, they've kept current to all milestones. So they're still um, they are still able to get the funding from the C, uh, CEC grant. They have not um, fallen off the wagon on that. Um, let's see. Okay, this is the what this is what they plan on doing, and what they are they, what and what they've done. So after release, it's received its first production body we know that and actually at this point we know that they've released their they've received their first four production bodies um they formed a strategic alliance with ctns um they've completed its full set of tooling for the um the body parts so they're still planning on making 10 to 12 vehicles i i suspect that's going down a bit but you know who knows i think before they were saying like 16 pi builds so it's down to 10 to 12 yeah so that is what's going on. All right, so that's what we get out of this um, SEC filing. Have a great day, everyone. It's gone too long already, so I've cut out lots of stuff and I haven't got too much in the way of comparisons with the old one. That's how it always goes. But what I wanna do last, and this'll take me a while, is to list the headings in the 2024 SEC report and compare it to the list of headings in the 2023. And that will show you, well, I don't even know what it will show you. <laughs> Wait until I make the list, I suppose. It is SEC Form 1K time. So Aptera has filed their 2023 Form 1K. Um, it was filed on April 2nd. 2024 that's actually like three weeks or two weeks earlier than it was filed last year so it's a you know people have been there I've, I've been hearing some comments that they're being slow about releasing it but it's actually a little bit earlier than it was last year so they mention um cherry and alafe here and uh, cherry and alafe here but they talk about here in addition we've entered into non-binding agreements with yazaki that's their, you know, the, the wiring harness, um, CPC, uh, the aerodynamic heat exchanger for a vehicle. So this is the belly cooling, which uh, isn't going to make it um, on the launch edition, mainly because of tooling costs. I think the engineering works, but the uh, implementation is costly and getting the tooling to make it is going to cost a lot. OK, here's an interesting thing that wasn't in the previous thing. It says in September 2023, the company established a subsidiary company, uh, Aptera Motors Italia SRL, based in Modena, Italy. So that's the new thing. Now, yeah, that that was pretty much the highlights of it. Let me scroll through here and see if there's anything else that I remember. Okay, I think that was it. So here are the headings that I laboriously listed down, typing everything into a Word document. And the best I can do is do them in columns so I don't get all of the headings, particularly in 2024, when many of the headings seem to be longer than the text that belonged to them. 
they certainly changed the style for 2024. And my first observation is that it was a lot of excuses, many more excuses than what were being made in 2023. And it starts off this way. It actually strangely begins with a summary. <laughs> When summaries should be at the end of most things, that's the logical way to do things. But in any case, they get into the list starting with risks and then basically what you might just say are excuses for what might go wrong. <laughs> Making excuses ahead of time. So for what it's worth, the video has gone too long already for me to talk a lot about the differences here. They're there for you to see. And even though I have them on three pages so that I could copy and paste them into paint, I'll adjust them so that you can scroll through them and evaluate them for yourself. Just on a surface perusal, you'll see that 2023 was broken up into items and notes. And they've strayed from that completely. So that'll do. I'll just leave it for any really interested people to evaluate more closely. That's all for me. Bye for now. Stay safe.